Hi Jo, I'm Louisa Rolf, an Assistant Commissioner in the Met and the National Police Lead for Domestic Abuse. I know you work for us, I'm really keen to hear about you and your story. Yeah, of course. So uh, my name's uh, Joanne. I was a um, victim of domestic abuse and now as a survivor, I'm working for the Metropolitan Police. I currently work uh, in the CSU, the Central um, Safeguarding Unit, and I have been working for the Met since uh, 2022. I was a victim when I was 18, uh, through to when I was 19. I uh, met the perpetrator in college. Um, it started off as I think most domestic relationships do and that it was good to start with. And then when the abuse started rolling, I really struggled to get out. It wasn't until I went to university that I actually realized what had been happening. Um, that, you know, being hit daily, uh, being held against the wall by my throat um, and unfortunately being raped was not a normal thing in relationships at that age. And uh, when I managed to escape it and report what happened to me to the police, I decided that I wanted to work with victims of domestic abuse when I joined the police to help people gone through something that I had. Wow, that's such a powerful story and and your courage and bravery in, in wanting to turn what you've been through into something really positive in, in helping other victims. That's I'm, I'm so impressed and thank you for coming to work with us. And uh, do, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, so I've seen a lot of change happen since I joined the police, um, both in my current role in the Met and previously when I worked in the county force. Um, question I'd like to ask you is how is it all changing going th forward in investigating and helping victims of domestic abuse? So um, something I'm, I care about an awful lot and I know that in policing we, we want to get this right but we don't always get it right and our challenge is often that our least experienced officers might be the person turning up at, at someone's house when they've called for help and they're, they're in a, an awful domestic abuse situation. So our expectations are really, really clear. We want our officers to show empathy with victims, to be able to put themselves in a victim's shoes and think about how they might want to be treated, but also to really understand the dynamics of domestic abuse, that perpetrators can be clever, manipulative, incredibly charming, and that they will work often to isolate their victim, to undermine their confidence, to make them believe it's their fault. So, you know, officers walking into that situation need to have an understanding of how abusers work. Um, and that might sound really complicated, but we've been working on training, the Domestic Abuse Matters training, I, I found really um, powerful because it's proven to increase officers' empathy, but also their understanding of how domestic abuse works and how perpetrators operate. No, that sounds really good and it's it's good to hear that it's not all just from the policing side but also the safeguarding side which I think can be really powerful. I know a lot of work is done um, not only by the police but also uh, partners linked with the police to help victims. Can you tell me a bit more about that please? Yeah so we work with many, many brilliant charities who support victims. And I know, one, they're great critical friends because they will challenge us when we get it wrong. And sadly, you know, the, the nature of abuse and, and the nature of policing is that sometimes we, we might miss those signs. Sometimes officers are facing so much pressure of whether those are investigative caseloads or they're a busy response officer. And, and working with victims who can challenge us, hold us to account, those, those brilliant charities who provide that support every day for victims works really, really well for us. I know that we have um, independent domestic violence advocates, so people who work as an advocate for a victim. They're often employed by charities and, and funded by the Mayor of London and local authorities to provide support, one-on-one -on -one support to victims when they're progressing a case through the justice system. But most importantly for us, because many victims call us not seeking a justice response, but they want help. They want the abuse to stop there and then. They want to be safe and they want understanding from us. So it's really important we think about that wider support that might help them and the interventions that might help perpetrators. You know, charities like Respect and Safe Lives who provide intervention programmes. So really important that officers attending those incidents are thinking broadly about what do I do now? How do I secure evidence and progress a great investigation? How do I ensure the victim knows that we care, that we show empathy? How do I manage that perpetrator? And how can I provide that, that broader support as well? Because our policing role is really clear. We should be solving crime, we should be bringing offenders to justice, but not every victim wants that, but they deserve our support to be safe. 
No, that sounds really good. I know a lot of victims of abuse can struggle to come forward to talk mm -hmm. to police initially. What would you say to a victim who's considering coming forward but doesn't feel like they're ready yet? What I would say is, you know, if you're unsure about coming to policing, please go to the national helpline. So Refuge Run and National Domestic Abuse Helpline. Its number is widely available. If you Google Domestic Abuse Helpline or your local charities like Women's Aid or others, if you're unsure about coming to us initially, do get some support. But please do think about coming forward to policing. And with the support of charities, um, often victims can, you know, feel supported and, and more confident in coming forward. But my view is, you know, I want every officer, one, to offer that support to victims, to reassure them that we'll be with them at every step of the way, but also that we won't take steps that make them feel less safe. Now, there may be cases where a victim comes forward and they might be really reluctant to pursue their case because they're incredibly frightened of a perpetrator, because, you know, they're, they're finding themselves in a difficult situation. This might be the father of their children, a person that they love, who also causes them great fear and distress. And we will respect their situation. But in certain cases, if we believe someone is so dangerous, the only way to secure the safety of a victim and their family is to you know, arrest them, to lock them up, to pursue a prosecution, then we might have to do that. But we would always want to do that with a victim knowing that we've got their best interests at heart and we are working with them. We know many victims do not want to pursue that justice outcome and we want to ensure that they feel safe and safer after our intervention. So the recent episode of The Met in the BBC documentary focuses on uh, two women who've come forward to police after experiencing domestic abuse. What would your message be to anyone who's been affected by watching the recent episode of the documentary? I would say, so I was impressed that our officers showed great empathy in dealing with victims, but also I sensed officers were, were grappling with the fact that victims were not keen to pursue prosecutions for, for a variety of reasons. And I had many questions at the end of that episode and watching it. And mine, it made me think, I, I want to be sure that we're supporting our officers who deal with these cases. But I also want to be sure that when victims come forward, we're doing everything we possibly can to support them, whether that's referring them to those support agencies we've talked about, the many brilliant charities, but also where cases are difficult to pursue, are we being as creative as we possibly can? Are we looking beyond just the facts in front of us and thinking about that perpetrator's wider behaviour? So it really made me think about what more I could do as a leader in the Met and, and how I can support our officers. And it made me think as well, so you work in our specialist um, team who investigate domestic abuse and you're likely to receive those referrals from responding officers of cases that they've attended. So. What makes a good case from your perspective and what would you like us to get better at? I think it's it can be really difficult for response officers who go to domestics, especially when you consider how many jobs they go to a day and how impactive those can be on the scene. And I think something that when I see it, when I'm working in my department from the handover is when they've asked a lot of questions, it's really evident. Mm -hmm. If the officers who responded, they've gone to an incident, say where someone's been reported to hit someone else. If the only thing in the handover is about that assault that happened on that day, mm -hmm. I don't think they've asked enough questions. I think as police officers, we're designed to be curious. And if we can go through that and make sure we're asking the victim those questions from what we've even seen or by using the DARA risk assessment to ask those questions to get that backstory because when victims report to the police or the first time victims will encounter the police it's not going to be the first time they've experienced abuse it's very unlikely in a lot of cases um, it takes seven or eight minimum um, times of what I'd consider to be a heightened abuse mm. so physical abuse usually um, before a victim will come forward and talk to police. So there's often a lot of backstory there that sometimes is missing. And on the handovers where those officers have recognised that and they've got those questions out, it makes it a lot easier for me to evaluate and do my job, especially if the suspect has been arrested at the scene, because that's further things I can put to him in an interview. Whereas sometimes if they're not asked, um, which can be for a number of reasons, I then when I contact the victim, I end up getting a lot more out of them and it can complicate the job on our end. So I think it's being curious is the first thing that I think any officer can do to really respond to yeah. those situations and uh, get the most out of the victim. And the victim will then feel like they're being listened to. You know, it's not just that one instant, the whole story will be heard and um, they can often feel more confident in police following that.
That's really clear. And I hear that so much in in any approach to investigations. The, the police officers, investigators that go with an open mind, ask lots of open questions and really do get behind the why something might be happening. So why a victim feels scared, why children might be you know, worried when, when dad's around. Then actually those kind of questions really, really are quite revealing, aren't they? That's, that's really clear. What a brilliant tip for our officers. Thank you. So um, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm so impressed to hear about your courage and how you've really channeled your experience into, um, you know, making things better for many, many more victims. And I'm keen to understand about support you might have had from the Met as a victim. Have, have you felt support at work? And are there are there things more things we can do to help people? Absolutely. I think sometimes it can be on a case by case basis. But I came into the Met having already reported my abuse and being a lot more confident in myself as a survivor, mm -hmm. um, which did help me a lot. Um, when I first joined, we were encouraged to look at the support services available to police officers. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually half a day in our training where we sat and looked at all of the support and all of the networks available. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a police equivalent of an IDVA, which you can contact, uh, where you can speak to someone and have a, what's essentially talking therapy about what's happened and to help you through it. And these people understand that we're police officers, they understand that we can experience the same thing in our role as a police officer that we may have done as a victim prior to joining or even since we've been joined. And I think it's important to always talk to someone and that is available. There's also a lot um, locally on Borough that isn't necessarily as official. Um, I remember when I first joined, I was really nervous about going to a particular type of job. So I spoke to my training sergeant and she immediately said that I'd never have to go to that kind of job. And she told me that this is common for a lot of officers. I saw it for a lot of my colleagues who had experienced things outside of work, experienced trauma. And when they said, I've experienced this, I don't know how I'll respond to it as a police officer. They had the opportunity to either be slowly phased into working into that section or not have to work it at all. I remember a story of one officer saying that the first time they responded to a job that they knew there was gonna personally affect them, they went with their line manager and the first time they just sat in the car outside and didn't go in second time they got to the door and the third time they actually went in and began responding to it and i think being aware of the trauma that officers have experienced is something that line managers should look mm. at and it can be really helpful to those officers so that they know that they're not going to be pushed into a situation that they're not going to be asked to deal with and could be traumatic for them and bring up some past traumatic memories for them and that is support I've personally received. And I think it's a really good thing the Met's doing to support its officers during um, traumatic episodes they might have experienced. That's so heartening to hear because policing often has a reputation, doesn't it, of being all about action and chasing down offenders and, you know, all about your courage. And it's, it's lovely to hear that there is a thoughtful caring, empathetic side to what we do, uh, whether that's our investigation and support of people outside of policing, but our care for our workforce. So I'm so pleased to hear that. It, it sort of gives me a real warm feeling of actually, we, you know, the difference we all want to make is, is happening and it's real for people. So thank you, Joanne, for, for what you do. Um, I, I know this is a tough job. And I know that, you know, it's lovely to hear that you're finding it rewarding to channel your experience into something that makes such a difference for victims. So thank you so much. And thanks for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. You know, thank you for listening. Thanks for talking to me as well. Um, I really appreciate that you are um, a domestic lead in your role as well. And uh, being able to talk to you about what the Met is doing specifically is really good. And uh, it gives me a lot of confidence as a survivor, but also as an officer responding to these jobs. Thank you.